If you're a content creator, you know convention season is in full swing. And you're probably thinking about how to show up to PAX, TwitchCon, DreamHack, or anything else on your calendar and make a great impression with brands. It is so easy to scroll your timeline, see fellow creators doing really cool stuff, and think, wow, how do I get that brand to notice me? So let's talk about media kits. Hi, I'm Libby, and online I go by Eskessian. I've been a content creator for 10 years, primarily on Twitch, and I'm also a marketing specialist in my day job, which means I spend a lot of time reviewing media kits to create impactful activations between creators and brands. I've had opportunities to work with some truly all-star companies in the space, so I'd love to share some tips, tricks, and best practices so that the next time you see one of those seeking creators tweets in your timeline, you can reply and really show off what you're good at. So let's dive right in. Let's start off simple. What even is a media kit? A media kit is a digital portfolio about your content. It says something about who you are, what kind of content you create, what you offer to a brand, your social media metrics, and why they should work with you. Think of it like a resume for your content. They typically include details like what kind of content you create, the size of your audience, any key metrics, and information on previous collaborations if you have any. Media kits come in a few varieties. A single page is often most common, but with creators that are larger or have bigger portfolios, you'll tend to see media kits spread out into multi-page decks that tell a little bit more about previous collaborations or dive really deeply into channel metrics and offerings. Having a media kit ready to go makes you look professional and prepared when reaching out to brands or organizations that you want to work with. You can make these in a few ways. Typically, you see online links like card.co or beacons.ai or PDF image versions that people will email out or reply to tweets with that they've customized themselves. Honestly, I have both because I like the flexibility, but before you decide on your format, let's talk about what should go into your media kit. The way I like to go about forming my media kit is I create a Google Doc on my drive with my Escassian email that is not intended to be pretty or for public consumption at all. I just make a big, ugly document of all of the information about me. Here it is on the screen. Uh, don't judge the fact that it looks horrible. The first thing I tend to see most often in media kits is a bio or about me. Don't go too wordy here as the person reviewing media kits may be reviewing dozens or hundreds of people a day so they're not gonna read a book about your life story. A couple of sentences about what makes your channel special is all you really need. Another important thing to include is some sort of visual that's recognizable to you. So this could be your photo, maybe it's your logo or an emote of yours. If you're a VTuber, it could be your model. Anything that someone can use to identify you in the other spaces they're gonna start to look up. So I tend to use the same photo across all my socials. And when I change that, I change it out in my media kit as well. I also make sure to include the Eskessi heart, my logo, because in my community, we talk about highlighting the joy of coming together for gaming and community. So that little speech bubble heart has become one of our core icons. So in my media kit, even on the page without my photo, I've still got the Eskessi heart. Hopefully when someone then looks my channel up, they see the heart and they go, oh, I know her. Of course, since we're talking about content creation, you're going to want to talk about your platforms that you create content on and their key metrics. So this could be icons for all of your different platforms, your usernames on them, and then your follower count or your current viewership or total views, your likes on TikTok. And if you're new to being a content creator, don't worry about small numbers. My TikTok is teeny, teeny, tiny, but I still keep it on my media kit. One, because it's a place where I do create content, just not as often as I should. And two, it is a place I'm willing to collaborate if a brand really wanted to. So it's up on there even as it grows. My key component with highlighting your platforms is that you want to showcase your best content. So stuff that you're really proud of. Linking to a YouTube channel you haven't posted on in several years is a little bit harder to build a sense of trust with someone reviewing your media kit. Another thing you might consider including is previous collaborations, if you have any. If you've been in an affiliate program or you've been sponsored before, you can include the sponsor logo or even a small case study on the performance of the work that you did. A lot of folks will also include other just notable work. So stream teams they're on, maybe they're part of the Unity Guilds, charity fundraising, anything like that that kind of shows that you've established your channel and built really cool things either by yourself or with other people can again help build trust with someone reviewing your media kit. If you want to be really specific about the kind of content you're willing to make with brands, you could add a services offered section. So you could put things down like 
I'll do an unboxing video or a sponsored gameplay stream. That's really helpful when folks are looking at creators for specific opportunities, just to see if it's something that you could align with. And finally, and probably the most important thing to have on your media kit besides your username, is your contact information. Your business email, which even could just be your stream username at gmail.com, is really important. I cannot tell you the number of times I've been reviewing creators to try and find information about them, and I look and I can't find a way to contact them even though they would be perfect for the opportunity I'm working on. So your homework after you watch this video all the way through is to open all your social medias in different tabs, make sure that your business email is in your bio for all of them and put it on your media kit. There's nothing worse than being the perfect person for an activation and the person moves on to the next creator on the list because they simply can't find any information on how to get in touch with you. Leave your email in your bio. When it comes to updating your media kit, whether it's the stats or the information in your bio, I like to do so quarterly or whenever there's a big change. So let's say your TikTok really popped off last month, go in and update those metrics. Or if you had a new collaboration that you wanna highlight, add that to your previous collaboration section. Every three months tends to be a good rule of thumb unless something really changes for your channel within those three months. Those regular updates can help ensure the brands have an accurate representation of your current performance. Okay, great. I've got all my metrics, my audience information, all of the information I might want in my media kit in one big Google Doc or other note of some kind. Now, how do I actually make this thing? If you decided to go the link option, there are a couple of different places you can go to do that. Personally, I prefer beacons.ai because I think their setup is really, really simple to do. You log in with all of your different platforms right into the website, your metrics are populated on one page and they update weekly or daily if you use their pro features. You can upload photos and media, customize the page to match your brand, and there's even a section where you can create case studies of previous work. So let's say there's a brand you've worked with before, not only can you list that as a collaboration, but you can link directly to the work that you did so someone reviewing you can click through to the other content you've created for brands. Like I said earlier, there are other online options as media kit builders. I just have a little more experience with beacons.ai and I really like the platform for its simplicity. If you wanna try it out, I'm not sponsored and I don't work with them at all, but I do have a referral link in my bio that'll get you $20 credit to try out their pro features for the first time. Beacons also has some really cool other tools like a link in bio page generator, a pricing calculator so that when your media kit really knocks somebody's socks off, you know what to charge them for all your cool sponsored moments. There's just a lot on their website that I think is great for creators, so feel free to check Beacons out. Like we said, that's not your only option though. Let's say you want to make a fully customizable PDF document or image version of your media kit. Let's jump into that real quick. The first decision you're going to make is one page or multi-page for your media kit. I think if you're just starting out building something like this, one page is really all you need. You can keep your key metrics, your bio, some basic information about you. You've got one page, you're done, and you're all set. If you do have a larger portfolio, let's say a lot of hosting, or you wanna highlight charity work, you could do two or three pages into a slide deck. I personally have a single page version as well as a two page version, just because I wanted to fit information in that didn't quite look right all crammed into one page. It's really up to you and you might get to a one pager and realize you need a second page, then it's just a design problem for you. Now, when it comes to designing, you could go a couple of different routes. Obviously, if you have the budget, you could hire someone to design you a really beautiful media kit. That's a fantastic option if you have your stats and you wanna do the work, but you don't feel as creative. That's totally okay. If you'd rather take full charge of it yourself or an artist isn't in your budget, that's okay too. Canva is a great free tool. I know people who make their media kits in Google Slides. Whatever will help you to create a layout that you love. If it's a tool you know, go and use that tool. There are tons of free options available. When it comes to the design, it's really up to you. Portrait or landscape, I see media kits in both orientations. Again, it's really what you like and you think looks good. I do have a great design resource for you to check out though. Ash Said Hi is a fantastic creator and she's a newly named leader of the Twitch Women's Guild. She created a post on her website that is called a visual design guide and it's meant for media kits or slideshows. It has a lot of really great information on how to balance your items so they have enough breathing room, it doesn't look cramped how to do color contrast. There's also a ton of resources online about the accessibility of your fonts and colors. I'll link to some in the description, but as you're building this out, please make sure you're thinking about who might be reading it. If they use screen readers, if they're colorblind, 
anything like that. You want to make this accessible, clean, and high quality. Having a media kit that looks good and seems well thought out is going to go really far in getting it reviewed. I've actually been interested for a little while now in redoing the PDF version of my own media kit. So I'm going to jump into Canva, take my document of all my stats and bio and information on one monitor and Canva in the other. I'm just going to play around with things until I come up with a layout that I like for the information I've already gathered. There we have it. In just an afternoon. Truly, this process, including filming it for myself, only took about 45 minutes. We built something clean, high quality, beautiful from scratch. This is a media kit I'd be really proud to put in front of a brand when I go to TwitchCon in like two days. Anything, I hope this video will show that you can do the same. So once you've built it, your next step is reaching out with it. That might mean replying to those seeking creators for an opportunity tweets that you see in your timeline. It might mean emailing it to a brand representative that you know. If you have questions about that process, leave them in the comments and we'll make a whole nother video diving into brand pitching and outreach. And if this video helped you at all to build your media kit, I would love to see the results. You can tweet them to me at Libby K, or you can post them in my Discord, link below. I would love to see what you've built. I hope you have a wonderful time making your media kit. I hope this video helped you learn something, and I wish you all the success with it. If you have any questions, I am always here to help on basically any social media platform. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!